Hofstra, of course, got off to the great start last week against Pace. They're playing Columbia in a scrimmage tonight, and they'll play Stony Brook next week. So it should be a very interesting couple of weeks here in local college football. Other games being played among the local schools this weekend. Pace is playing tonight against William Patterson. Tomorrow, the Kings Point Merchant Marine Academy, one of the members of the Liberty Conference, playing at Coast Guard. Stony Brook at home against Ramapo. And as you heard, Post going up against Salisbury State. Both teams are back on the field, and we should be ready to go shortly. And we'll have uh, the kickoff coming up. Dave, any keys that we should be looking for here in the second half? We saw Iona gain so much more of the momentum late in the first half with those two touchdowns getting back in the game. What do you look for? One thing we haven't seen tonight, and I think it's because of the success of the passing game by uh, St. John's, we haven't seen the running game so much, but uh, it's not that Iona shut down the running game, it's just they have uh, St. John's really hasn't needed it. But you you like to be a fly on the wall in those locker rooms to hear the coaches. I've been through a lot of coaches. I like to hear what some of them had to say, but again, McDermott's the guy that uh, says he went to quite, quite a bit. Uh, Iona did make the change in the second quarter, going to the four uh, defensive backs, and it seemed to work. It seemed to slow things down for... Uh, for Saint, the St. John's offense. McDermott has really burned uh, Iona the last two years at two touchdown passes last year and has three touchdowns, including two TD receptions so far this evening. Iona will be kicking off and St. John's will be getting the football. They exploded early for 28 quick points. Cessna, an eight-yard touchdown pass to McDermott. Krug, a 35-yard interception return. McDermott, a 62-yard punt return. And McDermott, a 95-yard pass from Cessney. Those last two touchdowns, by the way, were school records. St. John's had never scored a touchdown on a punt return. And the 95-yard pass, a school record. Then Farley caught a pass from Highland as Iona made it 28-7. And Highland threw one to Donnelly, a 21-yarder to make it 28-14. And the teams exchanged field goals, and that's the way we stand right now, 31-17 as Iona's uh, Menacal will be doing the kicking off here. Often hear, often hear football people talk about that first drive of the second half. That's always an important one. And right now, St. John's would like to get a good one going. Back to receive the kick, Manny DeSantis. Instead, it'll come to Conway at the 12-yard line. Looking to turn the corner as the alley. Conway across midfield. And down at the 34-33 yard line. Beautiful return by number 44, Kevin Conway. I'll tell you, the guy who made the mistake for Iona on that play was number six, Matthew Fitzgerald, had contained on the left side and allowed the running back to get outside the contain, and you saw what happened. You're going to see number six for Iona. Conway's going to take the ball. He's going to start up to his left and break it out to his right. Now, your contained man, number six, there he is. All right, now there's an open sideline. You get the open sideline, an extra 25 or 30 yards. A big play for St. John's. 54-yard kickoff return. And the Redmen in great field position to begin the second half. They exploded, as we mentioned, in the first half. Cessney goes right to the air, incomplete. A little lack of communication on that one as he was uh, trying to go to Anthony about Fatano. Greg Bennett, number 12, was defending. Interesting to note right at the top of this first drive, McDermott split to the left, double team. Amal Fatano, something I talked about at halftime. They'd like to see him get into the ball game, take some pressure away from McDermott. Sassy now 9 for 17 for 87 yards. Amal Fatano lines up to the right. As we show our end zone camera, you get a look at what Iona's looking at. DeSantis, the running back in the eye formation, the tailback. Up back gets the call, and Radulski taken down by Kevin Obser, number 55, the inside linebacker out of West Hampton Beach on Long Island, who's their leading tackler for last year. Obser just shooting the gap between the center and the guard to make a nice play. He's the one you can see right there getting the signals from the sideline and bringing them in. Good size at 6'2", 225, and excellent against the run. Now Radulski comes out of the ball game. Scott Kantrowitz checks in at fullback, bringing a play in from Bob Ricca. Redmond facing a third and long situation. Third and about nine. McDermott has single coverage to this uh, near nah, he's side. Double, he's double. Uh, now they'll get double coverage. Fitzgerald helping out Polanco. 
up the middle. It is going to be complete for a first down inside the 20-yard line at the 16-yard line. McDermott, despite double coverage, got himself open on that post, and Matt Fitzgerald finally brought him down. Hard to understand when a player is double covered, of course, that uh, one thing in that also, Cessny had plenty of time to throw the ball now. McDermott's going to come in from the right side. Look at all the time Cessny has. And here comes McDermott across the middle from the right side of your screen. He's wide open. For a guy who's got double covered, that's wide open. Redman offensive line doing a good job. McDermott now has caught six passes for 159 yards. Ball inside the 20. Here's the pitch coming to DeSantis. And a good gain inside the 10, close to a first down, maybe around the nine yard line. Brian Norton, the former St. John's player, brought him down for the Gales. Norton started at St. John's, transferred over to Iona, played at linebacker last year, now playing at free safety. Pickup of around six and a half or seven. So Manny Tassantis, who had a big ball game last year, Dave. 140 plus yards, uh, not much in the first half, but he's explosive anytime he gets his hands on the ball. Chesney on second down. They're down to try something because they had a good pickup on that first down. Looking for the corner, it's a favorite pattern to McDermott. Collides with Polanco there, and Polanco called for pass interference. The reason he was called for pass interference, he wasn't playing the ball, had great defensive position. That is a, very, a favorite pass. Sesney throwing the fade pattern. When you get down close and the fade pattern is, the receiver just moves outside. Now, Polanco's got to be playing ball. You see McDermott just come outside. Here's Polanco in pretty good shape. You see he's not playing. He's not playing the ball. And good call. Good camera coverage by our crew, producer director Larry Roth. Mike Valentino, the center, being helped off the field. He was shaken up on that play. Defensive pass interference in the end zone. Automatic first down on the two-yard line. Notice they bring it out to the two. That's a college rule. Pass interference in the end zone. Not the one, but the two. There's your center who is hurt. They're going to come over and probably tape up his ankle or his knee. And Lee Yurton has taken his place at center, I believe. 77 did come in the ball game. Let's see if they shift or they put him at center. So the Redmond with a goal-to-goal -goal situation. Out over the ball, however, will be number Capex, 66, Anthony Capex. The guy. <laughs> Very valuable offensive lineman for St. John's. Good sophomore. Flags in the backfield Play. before the play. Right side of South, the Iona defense jumped before the play. The snap didn't count. Play didn't count. We'll bring it down to the one. Oh, wait a second. Now they're going to call it against St. John's. Bring it back to the seven. Well, the illegal procedure call. And now the Redmond face with a first and goal from the seven-yard line. In case you're just tuning in, St. John's led 28-0. Iona came back to make it 28-17. Uh, and St. John's, just before the first half ended, added a field goal, and they lead right now 31-17. Big difference in, in the college game, the wide hash marks. This ball is on the left hash mark. They've got a lot of room way over to the right side of the field. And Amalfitano is split out there, and there's a lot of room to work with over there. McDermott down here on the left. Greg Bennett with single coverage against Amalfitano. Polanco with single coverage against McDermott. Watch the fade again. Now they send the man in motion. Pitch coming to DeSantis. A loose one tackle. He may get to the corner of the end zone, and he's in. Manny DeSantis, the man we said that they had forgotten about. Comes up with a touchdown. He rushed, as we said, for about 144 yards in a couple of TDs last year. And St. John starts the second half the way they started the first half. Coach Ricca likes to try to get him outside if he can. We just talked about that right side. A lot of room to work with in DeSantis. He ran about 30 yards on the play. Gained six or seven for the touchdown. So Manny DeSantis, the explosive 5'9 senior, who's a potential big play player fought off some injuries the last couple of years to become a real fine running back. Carroll to try the kick. It's up. And he has been perfect tonight, Dave Jennings. Five extra points and a field goal. 
and I don't see any penalty <laughs> flags. I'll tell you, that first quarter was wild in a lot of ways, and one of them was uh, about five penalties on scoring plays. Again, we talk about that wide side of the field. You're going to see DeSantis take the pitch, get him outside fast. Now it's just a race. A long way to go. He's got a lot of room to work. He's already at the other hash. He's still got a long way to go. He just outruns everybody into the end zone. Got by Greg Bennett, the last man back there. And in our booth has walked in Jack Kaiser, the St. John's athletic director with a big smile right That's now. The way to block, That's the way leading. To That's the way to take also go, welcoming go. Rich Petruccioni, the Iona athletic director, Papitano. who uh, took over That's recently it, for Rick there, Mizzuto. Right? And oh. Iona's delighted That's they're going to have a new field, a facility that's being readied right now, and they should have it in about a month. Hopefully they'll have it in a month so they can play, because they've had to go to a field in, in I believe, Mount uh, Vernon. Vernon. And uh, you like to have your home field. When you have to travel to a field, it, even though it's your home field, it feels like another away game and it's going to be called Mazella Field right on the campus right in front of the uh, basketball gymnasium so we get ready for the kickoff here with the Redmen now leading it by a score of 38 17 so they've regained the 21 point edge we talked about that being an important series the first one now this will be the first series offensively for Iona Della camera at the one Della Cameron crossing the 20-yard line where he stopped. Patrick Mussolini, number 32, on the tackle. And the Gales will put it in play for the first time here in the second half. Five plays, 33 yards, and two and a half minutes or so for the Redmen to come up with that touchdown. We mentioned earlier, Dave, they're an explosive team. And they used Manny to Santis that time. Out over the ball comes Tom Killian, the guards are Joe Bono and Mark Conlon, the tackles Jerry Floor and Eddie Robinson. Arterbury gets the call. And gang tackling at the line of scrimmage, Majewski and Palowski with the initial hits. We call first drive of the first series for Iona. They came out passing the ball and got stuck right away this time. A few adjustments there. All right, let's try to get the offense into the flow. Start with a few running plays and then open it up. Five, three, Luke. Freshman quarterback Billy Hyland threw three interceptions in the first half, but was exciting and did throw two touchdowns to get his club back in the game. Della Cameron will line up as a flanker to the left side. Bergamini to the right. Womack, who they've got to get the ball in his hands at Farrelly. They throw to the sideline. Della Camera with some tight coverage by Kevin Conway. They rule it incomplete. Iona wanted a flag on the play, but they're not going to get it. So did Della Camera. I thought there was uh, contact before the ball came in to be catchable. Conway saying, no, 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 that was a fine play. Hey, that was a great call, Mr. Official. Conway, of course, had that big kickoff return to start the second half. And he's been a real pleasant surprise out of Beth Page High School on Long Island. He's really improved his quickness. Had a real good uh, preseason. So third and long for the freshman quarterback as Womack goes in motion. Got good protection, throwing, tip incomplete. Highland, uh, rather Majeski, got a piece of it as the intended receiver was Womack. Womack looking for the uh, penalty, but the ball was tipped, so there wouldn't be uh, uh, there wouldn't be pass interference. And by the same time, the hit was a little bit late, but that's because the ball was tipped. There's a look at Menicola. He has been doing quite a bit of punting here tonight. Freshman replacing Jean-Pierre Lacour. And now St. John's has put back two deep, but one of them is short for the short punt. Of course, they got a long kickoff punt return early. This one is a short one. This time, McDermott will make a fair catch at the 45-yard line. And St. John's takes over an excellent field position, leading it 38-17 to with 11-18 to go in the third quarter. See if there are any changes for the Redmond. Paul Radulski will be in the backfield along with Manny Tassanis. And Scott Cessney will be calling the signal. Interesting note about, uh, about the quarterback Cessney. He really wasn't highly recruited as a uh, freshman. In fact, he had to go to Finland in the offseason to win the job when they played some games over in Finland going into his sophomore year. Working out of the eye formation.
First man through was Radulski, the fullback, and he doesn't get much. 6'3", 205-pounder. Jack Foligno, Fogliano, rather, number 95, with the stop. You know, He's Sacken, the pizza man. Yes. <laughs> Sacken just lined up on the right side. They keep running away from him. Why not? Fogliano, there was a question whether he was going to come back to school this year. He apparently bought a pizza store down in Florida, was doing well, and... Uh, uh, Harold Crock was holding his breath. You don't get too many 6'4", 250-pounders uh, that are good football players at your program at Division Three level, but he decided to come back and go to school. Told, told Coach Crocker to give Fogliano the pizza concession at training camp. That would bring him back. Maybe he'll be a Pizza Hut All-America this year. From the eye formation on second down. German in motion. And flags are dropped. We have a delay of game. I don't see there's a 25 second clock, but I don't see it here, so we can't tell you when it runs out. And if we can't see it, we can't tell you when it runs out, neither can says. <laughs> delay of game, offense, still second. Referee Bob Lynch, his crew has done a fine job. Umpire Nick uh, Kukaris. And linesman Bob Hennessy, line uh, judge Andy Fleming, back judge Bob Pompliano, and field judge Steve Zimmer, and clock operator Norm Carter. Seven penalties for 75 yards for St. John's. On second and long here, second and 13. DeSantis, oh, good tackle at the line of scrimmage by the Gales. Kevin Obser, showing why he was their leading tackler. Real tough, hard-nosed kid. And one thing St. John's has done to counter uh, putting Sackinger on the right side, they put their best uh, offensive lineman, Anthony Kapek, from right guard to left tackle to match him up. Look at Obser, who played his high school ball on Long Island. Many of these players are products of local schools. Third and a long 18. Cessna will go to the air, looking for McDermott. Oh. It'll be almost picked off. Polanco had visions of uh, six points right there, and had he been able to hold on to the ball, he sure had six. Should have held on to it again. Double coverage now with Polanco and number six, who is uh, Matthew Fitzgerald. So you've got two guys. Again, the ball was floated a little bit. Here's you're going to see McDermott go outside. Now watch the good timing by Polanco. What happens? Right through his head. Almost caught by McDermott. Polanco, as a freshman last year, was second team all Liberty Conference, and he's the fastest player. He would have been gone. Speed, he would have been gone. To carry all. It's a good kick right here. here. Right here, right here, right here. And it will take a great bounce for the Redmen as that ball will finally die inside the five-yard line. Now, why didn't Polanco try to catch that one? I have no idea. You've got a 10-yard rule they talk about where a punt that's going to land inside the 10, but that wasn't even close. That was a bad play by Polanco, and the ball is now in the three-yard line. David, Very. I don't know if uh, you picked it up, but Sackager almost blocked that punt. He was, was putting a lot of pressure on. There's always, a, whenever you have a, a, a punt return, which is what Iona had on that time, you always have one player to force. Why not pick a guy like Sackager who's used to forcing? 55-yard punt, no return. Got to love those uh, numbers, Dave, when you get the break like that. From the end zone, as we watch on first down, Tony Morrow the set back behind the quarterback, and he gets the handoff. Morrow doesn't have the speed to go outside. Dragged down by Pete Mayeski as they strung the play away along the line nicely. This is where you get hurt having a freshman quarterback in. You've got to live with it. You've got to gain some experience, but here you have to go with your conservative plays. Remember early in the game when they were back deep and Highland went back to pass from deep in his own territory and was forced to throw quickly and made a bad decision. It resulted in six points. John Krupp picking off the pass and going in for the touchdown. Now Donnelly lines up as a flanker, wide to the left. Highland looking for uh, Donnelly. He's got it, but he won't get much. He is hit hard at the 10-yard line by Kevin Conway. And Kevin Conway's having a fine ball game day. Playing that play well. Very tough pass to throw. It's a very long pass. That time Iona lined up on the right side. And Highland throwing an out pass way across the field on the left side. It's a long pass. A very dangerous pass down here. Conway read it all the way, but he was playing off the receiver somewhat. So it allowed for the completion, but not much of a gain, although it is third and uh, two. And Della Cameron will line up as a flanker. Again, the single setback. They send Womack in motion. Haven't gone to Farrelly much here in the latter stages. 
Highland throwing. He's got a receiver wide open. Della Camera has the first down at the 25 yard line. John Del Rey on the coverage, number 42. And by the way, Del, uh, that that guy, Chris Della Camera, is the cousin of our producer director of the booth, Larry Rowe. No wonder this guy is getting so much camera time. <laughs> look at him. Look at him. Chris a junior out of uh, Yonkers. And we got to get him, him the camera off him by the time the next play starts. He almost squirted away for tell you for a, a big gain here. He's not a big receiver. Right. He's wide the open. speediest wide receiver. Watch duck under here. Now do we have a late hit? Do we have a late hit here? Bang. Ah. Mm. Looked like Mike Cunningham may have gotten away with something there. But a big first down for Iona. Here's Morrow. And he'll fight his way up to the 30-yard line. Stopped by, again, the aforementioned John Del Rey. There is a St. John's player down on the field. Colangelo is down grabbing his mm -hmm. knee. Rich Colangelo, the junior from Monsignor Farrell High School on Staten Island. An overachiever, kid who just wants to be the very best. Give you 100%. It appears it's just cramps here because they're picking it up, trying to straighten it out, push the toe down. He's got cramps either in his thigh or his calf. Dave, on an omni-turf surface or any of this astroturf, uh, are, do you have tendency to get more cramps as compared to uh, to grass? Well, not really, but it's a it's a you would if it you possibly would if it were a hot day. We've got a break in the action right now. 7:06 to go in the third quarter, and St. John's leads it 38 to 17. I wonder if I can get a car loan. Oh, I wonder if they'll give me a vacation loan. Join the Apple Bank family and you'll never have to wonder if you can meet your financial needs. You'll get a personal family banker, free, no bounce checking, and more. Join the Apple Bank family and feel good about banking again. Come in or call Apple Bank for Savings. We're good for you. All right, we're back here at Redmond Field, and what you're looking at right now is the special team board that is posted up by the trainers section of St. John's on the near side of the field. Now, the guys, if they do forget their assignments, and Dave, you were on special teams, you can relate to this, all the guys have to do is come by, find their name, and see where they're supposed to be on the field. So far, special teams for St. John's have done uh, pretty good tonight, wouldn't you say so? They certainly have, and of course, when I played, I didn't have to worry about uh, looking at my spots. I had one spot. It was either on the bench or on the field, but that was it. Let me just get back to that, what, what I just said about, uh, you asked me if, if an astroturf, uh, artificial turf might be hotter. I said it would be during the daytime on a hot day when that ref when it really absorbs, it both absorbs and reflects the heat. And astroturf fields get so hot on a sunny day. Now, a beautiful night day, uh, night game, It's and it's a mild day. It's probably 65 degrees out here, so not a problem tonight. Yeah, it's a beautiful night. We've got a big crowd, as we mentioned, over 3,000 second sellout they've had here in St. John's history. Previous sellout was a game they played against Hofstra when both teams were undefeated about uh, six years ago. Second and five from the 30-yard line. Island handing off. Morrow will get to the 31-yard line, and that's it. Very short gain. Kenny Cobb shutting it down. Along with Frank Palowski. Palowski came in from behind, made a nice play. He's the off end and the tag. And we got another player down. Same player. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's Colangelo. He's on the sideline. Yeah, on the sideline. <laughs> Still working on Richie. So a big third down play coming up for Iona trying to keep the drive alive with 6.15 to go in the third quarter. Trailing by 21. Womack again in motion. Morrow in the backfield. Good block by Morrow, but the pass picked off by Kevin Conway. Still on his feet and down at the 11 or 10 yard line. Kevin Conway having a fine ball game. Picked off the fourth pass intercepted by the Redmen so far tonight, thrown by Billy Hyland. I'll tell you, Hyland would love to have gotten that, gotten that pass back. Just a timing pattern, and he didn't look before he threw it. Conway was playing right up on the receiver. You, you'll be see him come into your screen here. Well, that's a fast release. There it is. He played up, read the quarterback. Quarterback did not receive the, re, uh, read the cornerback. Now watch uh, Hyland come in here and attempt to make the tackle. Doesn't make it. Conway almost went in. 
Chris Anello, number 81, was the intended receiver. He had just come in the ball game. 32-yard interception return. Let's see if they go to uh, McDermott right away, left side with that fade pattern. Go for the big play, maybe. They've been a big play team all the time. And he does look for that same play. McDermott is there. And Dave Jennings, you hit it right on the money. Fifth, fourth touchdown for this young man. And what a game he's having. So Dennis McDermott comes up with the touchdown. And St. John's now with 44 points. They lead it 44 to 17. How often do you see when there's a big turnover, the offense go right for the big play? That is a play that worked before. It was a pass interference. They then got the touchdown from DeSantis. This time it's there. McDermott's a fine receiver, and he's tuned in beautifully with his quarterback, Sesney. So the young man now just one touchdown pass shy of Todd Jamison's record, all-time school record. A lot of records could be broken in the next game or so. As Tricario's okay, kick is perfect, he's six for six on the night. And the Redmond lead is 45 to 17. So they love the first and third quarter. Now again, when you talk about a fade pattern, it's a receiver. You won't see the receiver, but the quarterback just goes back, lobs it up over his outside shoulder, the receiver's outside shoulder. You can see McDermott wide open here. Not a good job by number, uh, <coughs> excuse me, not a good job by number 12 on this play, who is uh, Greg Bennett. Here it is, just a fade a little, with a little post action, but look how wide open he is. You think they've run that in practice a few times? Great timing, and McDermott has tremendous hands and concentration. He's caught seven passes for 170 yards and three touchdowns. And, of course, uh, had the big uh, punt return for another score. He's only four touchdowns or so shy of a school record. David, keep it contained, okay? Keep it contained. You know, I think when uh, Coach Crocker watches these game films uh, probably tomorrow or on Sunday with his team, I think he may choose to just ditch that first and third quarters. What do you think, Bear? <laughs> burn burn the tape of those uh, first and third quarters. Maybe the players will get to them before they uh, get back. Well, Rich D'Amico, the defensive coach, we talked to as a couple of times this week, and he was really high on things. His defense uh, did a great job last year, but Scott Sesley is picking him apart. Della Cameron and Womack are deep as Tricario gets set to boot it away with 5.53 to go here in the third quarter. Don't forget these explosive Redmen will be on the field next week right here on Sports Channel. Next Friday night at 7.30 against Siena. Womack will take it at the five. Got a chance here. One man to beat. Could be a 95-yard touchdown run. Wow. We told you Womack was a big play guy. He's the second fastest player on this squad at four, four and a half in speed. And he goes 95 yards for the score. That time he did a much better job getting behind his blockers. On the previous kickoff, he was not behind his blockers. Also made a couple of individual moves. Now you have to wonder, will Iona start going for two points? Have to wonder here, but that was a bit, what a big play. Now again, you notice, and they're taking a look at Womack, as we as Iona lines up, once again, they've sent their eight or nine players, uh, seven or eight players off to the, there you can see it. And now the center and the holder and the kicker line up in their normal spots. And also way off to the right, number 82 is lined up for Iona. Now they shift back. You gotta believe at some point in time, uh, they're gonna use this for something. You would think so. Maybe not tonight, maybe down the road. Highland is the holder. Bergen's kick low right into the line of scrimmage, and the kick fails. First kick we've had failed tonight. Bad snap by the center of the ball. Now, I don't think the holder ever, Highland ever got it up. You can see Highland coming off. Uh, a low snap on the ground. Highland did not get it up quickly enough. It was, uh, and I believe that was the reason for the low kick. See, you're going to see Womack get right behind his blockers. He'll get through that first line like we talked about before. McDermott, a beautiful move. Now cut back. There you go. He's off and gone. And he has the kind of speed you won't catch him from behind. Get by that first group, and then you have very few players to beat. Then it's up to you. Now you still got to start making some individual moves. Here you'll see it beautifully. See him right behind his front wall. There are five guys. And here's the hole. Now he gets by his first group. There's a great move and another great move. And a third one coming up. Oh. 
he turned around Johnny Del Rey, number 42, who was chasing him. What a great return. So we've had just about everything here, Dave Jennings. We've had a punt return, a kickoff return for a touchdown. We've had an interception return for a touchdown. We've had passing TDs, rushing TDs. We've had two field goals. Only scoring play we haven't had has been a safety. Haven't had a safety, no onside kicks yet. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, if you enjoy seeing the ball in the end zone, you've got to enjoy this game. Not very close to, at this point, but again, we saw in the first half, I want to get back in the ball game, so don't count them out. We've had no fumbles recovered for a touchdown either, Stu Hornick, our statistician reminds me. Manikow's kick, not a good one, taking it around the 13-yard line. And DeSantis going to the outside. Out of bounds at around the 44-yard line. Run out by Leroy Dixon, number 42. Dixon, an interesting story. He's in the regular Army and uh, came into Iona late uh, in terms of age as a student. Was away, missed uh, two weeks of training camp because he was in the Army Reserve. What's the irregular Army? I don't know, Dave. You said the regular the Army. Regular. Well, as compared to the Reserves. Oh. He was a regular Army guy and... Uh, He's happy to be back in camp and away from boot camp, so to speak. First and 10 now for St. John's after the big kickoff return. Let's see if they stay on the ground here to try to eat up some time. They will to DeSantis. Cuts back and is able to pick up three or four yards. Jack Fogliano, number 95 on the stop. Clock ticking with 5.15 to go. Let's go down on the field, Carl Reuter. All right, thanks very much, Barry. I just came back from the Iona sidelines. I talked with big number 70, John Sackinger, and he said that uh, Coach Crocker has put him to the outside because St. John's is double teaming him, figuring that if he can get to the outside, maybe he can get back to the inside quicker. He said the senior's just going to have to come up big now and get them back in the ball game with some big plays. Barry? All right, Carl says the 11 for 20 for 213 yards and three touchdowns looking for number four here. Outstanding attempt by Amal Patano. He caught the ball, but he was out of bounds. Out of bounds. Defending on the play was Greg Bennett, but Amal Patano is a guy, as you mentioned earlier, Dave, that they hope will take a lot of the pressure off McDermott. He's a kid who's about six foot, 165 pounds, has excellent speed, a real leaper. We saw him go up to get that ball. And if he's healthy this year, the Redmen are going to have two uh, real good wide receivers. So on third down, Jason Villar now has checked into the ball game for St. John's, number 12, a freshman wide receiver. Destiny with good protection, looking for McDermott, in and out of his hands and nearly intercepted. Fitzgerald was the man with the hit. He thought he uh, had made the play, and it was almost picked off. Setting up a fourth down situation. There is a flag, however, on the play, Dave. Says he's coming over and almost. Well, John Chaldone thought he had the interception. We had defensive interference against them. On an uncatchable play, right? We're going to wave it off. Right. Well, there you heard it from referee Bob Lynch, and maybe kind of shaking your head a little bit about that one. Well, I'm not sure why it was uncatchable. Maybe it was away from the play. Be that as it may. Definitely catchable, I thought. I thought so, too. Tricario will be doing the punting. Hasn't had to punt very often today. Three for an average of about 42 yards. Della Cameron's the only deep man back. You watch the ball bounce. It'll take another good St. John's roll inside the 10, down and around the four and three. I'll tell you what Iona has got to do with these short punts. They've got to put at least two guys and maybe three guys back because every time the ball is hit, it's rolled 15, 20 yards. It's, it's, I mean, that's that's five or six or seven offensive plays. You can't expect the team to go 97, 98 yards a lot and score. They can do it once or twice. 47-yard punt, no return. Tricario's had a couple of those uh, big rolls, and he's, uh, his average uh, is improving, Dave. You're kind of smirking. Those, those, I wouldn't mind those rolls. We call those newspaper punts because they're not great punts, but in the newspaper they look great because you get those big averages. <laughs> Dave, what did you average at St. Lawrence when you were punting? <clears throat> uh, that's such a long time ago, <laughs> I can't remember. Ancient history. That's right. 
Island with that fake bought some time, running out of time right now, and he'll be down at the three or four yard line. So he Highland. said there's no safety. Almost there was their safety, but again, Highland is a guy. Yeah, you, you hate to see the freshman back there, but he's the type of guy who you, who's used to getting out. But one thing that that St. John's did a good job. They kept him within the tackles. Yep. That's one thing they wanted to do. They kept him in, so he only brought it up to four yard line, and we've got a player down for Iona on the field right now, and. And Highland doesn't look all that great. You know, Dave, uh, Iona has the same color scheme that Boston College has. You think, uh, does he remind you a little bit of Doug Flutie? Well, you know, Flutie's done so much, won the Heisman Trophy, had a great... Uh, uh, I think that's Robinson, number 77. I think you're right. There's and nobody a, bigger than that guy. A, there's there. a, a lot of player on the turf, and this looks like a little more than cramps. All right, next week, the New York Mets continue their stretch run in the National League East, and Sports Channel delivers the action. Monday and Tuesday at 7.30, the Mets battle the Philadelphia Phillies from Veterans Stadium. And Thursday at 8, it's international hockey as the Calgary Flames take on the Soviets. So stick with Sports Channel for the Mets and more, all next week, live on Sports Channel. And we see uh, the young man being helped to the sideline there. You've got to have a lot of help to help him off, but he's uh, going off pretty much under his own. Whenever you see a player who has got a possible knee injury, when you can see him limp off, putting some weight on it himself, that's always a good sign. Not that it's not injured, but uh, a much better sign than seeing him being carried off. And speaking of the Mets, uh, they picked up a game on the Chicago Cubs today because the Mets won tonight 7-2. to two. Cubs lost to the Cardinals this afternoon. Mets now two and a half games back. Farrelly, who has been very quiet here, in motion. Highland, oh, great job of escaping there. Look at this little exciting guy get to the 15-yard line and pick up the first down. Quick feet. So he's the type of guy that the, when the offensive coordinator is watching this, he's holding his breath. <laughs> and I'd like, to, I'd like to have the camera on him because, oh, my golly, what's he doing now? Get out of there. Great play. When it's over, it's a great play. <laughs> but during the course, it's like, what are you doing? Dave, over the course of the years, you've played. Uh, oh. Eddie, the guy, the guy who was the worst was Fran Tarkington because he'd drop back 40 yards sometimes. Highland has rushed 11 times for only 18 yards, but uh, he has escaped trouble on several occasions. Why aren't they going to Farrelly more? As we see Farrelly going in motion again, this time he goes up the middle intended for Womack, and he got a good hit from John Krug that time. But getting back to that point, Farrelly was so effective in that first half comeback, Farrelly we haven't seen him. Farrelly was. He's, he's real good at going in motion and cutting up and using and going with a post pattern. He's so big. He's a receiver that, that Highland should look for. But again, keep in mind one thing, too. Highland is quick to run. He doesn't always stay in there. He's not as patient. And that's just the nature of him as a quarterback. And he's going to have to learn to be a little more patient as he as he matures. Second and long yardage here for the freshman quarterback, Billy Hyland. Farley again in motion. Hyland running and dives. Mayeski covered him up there as he got to around the 20-yard line. Kenny Cobb also helping out. No such thing as a secondary receiver with the Iowa offense as Highland's running it now. He dropped back four or five steps. He looked for his primary receiver. Boom, he just started running upfield. That's something, again, he's got to get a little more patient. Give it time. Rob Spence, the Iona offensive coordinator, is in the booth to us next door. And uh, he's a guy who is happy to get this young man. Rob coached at Iona Prep and knows what this guy could do playing in Catholic high school football against him for the last three years. In and out of the hands of Womack. And it'll set up a punting situation. Mike Cunningham defending on the play. Should have caught that ball. But it's easy for me to catch it up here. Now, if you'll notice, I don't know if we can see this, this, this punt return by St. John's. They have a guy playing about 25 yards from the line of scrimmage. I don't know if we'll be able to you, you can pick it up. They've got actually three, two short guys to play for the short kick. This is what Iona should do. Medical got some pressure that time. McDermott has a bounce out of his hands. Iona with his second bubble recovery of the night. 
So the Gales come up with a big play. Matt Fitzgerald, number six, with the recovery as a, McDermott, one of the few things he's done wrong today. Well, I'll tell you, that kick was what I call a helicopter kick. Most of your punts are, are spirals or end over end when they don't hit them. This was swirling like a helicopter blade, and it floats down almost like a knuckleball, very hard to get a read on. You probably see it at McDermott's chest. Let's keep an eye on it here. See how it floats and hits him actually in the face mask and chest because it floats. It's hard to get a good read on. And Iona right down there to make the play. Big play for Iona. 41-yard punt. And let's see if the Gales can cash in on the St. John's turnover, the second fumble that they've recovered. Island got to escape. And not Kenny Cobb combining on the tackle with Omar Gonzalez, the sophomore defensive lineman who goes at six feet, 250 pounds out of Yonkers and played for Iona Prep and played for the offensive coordinator, Rob Spence, who's next door to that, the Gale. That was a straight drop back quarterback motion. And when the quarterback is dropped straight back, the offensive line has to push the pressure outside. Well, one thing that uh, Highland is doing, instead of stepping up, he's immediately stepping away. And that time he stepped into the pressure. Second and long yardage here, 19 from the 49 yard line. Island looking under the coverage, and he throws complete for about a 12-yard pickup to uh, Byron Womack coming out of the backfield. Good play selection there. He went underneath, and Womack coming out of the backfield didn't go for the uh, for the 25 yards right there, Dave, and uh, threw a nice pass. Well, on that first play after the big inter after the big uh, turnover, they did go for the big play, but St. John's was up to it. Get it up! Third and 11 from the 41. Let's see if St. John's Blitz is the freshman here. Tony Morrow in the ball game and running back. Womack in motion. He's got wide open Byron Womack at the 20. And the first down at the 16-yard line. Pete Majeski knocked him down, but Byron Womack, there might have been some missed coverage out of there by the linebackers. He was wide open. Four defensive backs dropped deep, and the linebackers underneath were not there. I, I couldn't, I looked up here at Bichetti, but let's take a look at it from, you'll see it from behind Highland, and right in the middle is wide open, a little bit off to the right. And there's number 34, Mayeski, coming in late. Mayeski most likely had that, that zone coverage in there, and it wasn't there. Way to hold on to the ball there. Chris and Ella, number 81 in the ball game. For Iona as a wide receiver. Here's Womack again, short gain to the 15-yard uh, line. Pickup of around two or three. Mike Cunningham, the linebacker, on the tackle. Along with Rich Colangelo, or check it, Colangelo coming in the ball game right now. And I'll tell you, you asked about Ferrelli. That time he was open in the end zone, and when he came back to the huddle, he told Highland that he was, uh, as the quarter expires here, he told him he was open. And at the end of the third quarter, that is it. The whistle blows a long night of football, but we've got 15 minutes to go. St. John's, with what appears to be a comfortable lead, will be right back watching college football on Sports Channel. New family members mean new responsibilities and new needs for life and health insurance protection. Why not drop in on your MetLife representative to help you figure out what's right for you and your family? Get Met. It pays. The circulatory system of your car. That's where Texaco's new System 3 gasoline starts to bring new life to fuel injectors and valves. It can keep new cars running like new and actually help restore performance to older cars. You'll get more power from every octane. Five tanks is all we ask. Back at St. John's, Barry Landers along with uh, my sidekick tonight, Dave Jennings. And right now as we begin the fourth quarter, big uh, second down play for the Iona Gales. They trail in the ball game 45 to 23. Tony Morrow in the ball game at running back. Freshman quarterback Billy Highland's been in there all the way despite throwing two interceptions. He 
He's clicked on some TD passes. Joe Owens, number 22 in motion. And look at Highland scramble his way inside the 10-yard line, close to the six-yard line, close to a first down. Don't know if that was a design play. It may have been, but St. John's was coming with a blitz, and Highland read it beautifully. We've got a timeout on the field right now, an official's timeout, as uh, they're probably going to measure, but just goes back quickly and runs to his left. Look at all the room he's got. I don't know, hard to say if that was, uh, that was a design play. So he's taking a share of hits tonight, too. And well, he's carried the ball several times. And, of course, he's been under pressure passing. He's completed 12 of 23. As you see, a first down for the Anna Gales first and goal. Highland has passed 12 for 23 for 181 yards, two TDs and two interceptions. And he's also rushed 14 times for 21 yards. So the Gales with first and goal. So again, let's keep an eye on Ferrelli. They haven't thrown to him lately, and he's a guy who you could go to down here in the end zone, towards the end zone. And they also have a wide receiver out to the near side, Chris Anello, number 81. Joe Owens in motion. Here's Morrow trying to turn it outside, chased, and he dives forward inside the five to around the three yard line. Don't see Tony Morrow going outside very often. Doesn't have the speed, run down by Mike Cunningham. Also, keep in mind that last blocked extra point by uh, uh, by Iona. Now that the score is, uh, if if Iona scores here with a one point Second extra point, it'd be a 15 point Very lead. Good. So that one extra point that was missed could loom big late in this fourth quarter. Second and goal to go. Tomorrow again, the single setback. Island looking in the end zone. The ball tipped incomplete. Pete Mayeski again on the play. A lot of traffic over there, Dave Jennings. Tough throw to complete. I believe it was tipped towards the line of scrimmage. Fortunately for Iona, it was because that probably would have been intercepted. There were too many red shirts around where the ball was going before it was tipped. Third and goal situation for the Gales. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this formation. We got three people in the backfield, two tight ends. Very unusual formation. They'll go now to Womack, trying to skirt outside. Big defensive play over there by Kevin Conway. Came up from the secondary, and uh, he has been a real hitter all night. And you got to believe on this fourth down, you've got to believe that Iona's going to go for it. Now, as St. John's did before, Iona's got it on the other hash, but they've got a wide open side to the left field, left side. That uh, formation they showed the last play was the first time we've seen it. Same and formation go the same again. Formation. Didn't work that time. <laughs> Highland will roll to this side. Penalty flag. Looking for the end zone. Overthrows the intended receiver. He was looking for Farrelly, but there is a flag on the play. Tough, tough pass to try to complete, as you pointed out earlier, running to his left, throwing with his right hand. Well, and I, I'll tell you, Iona's going to get a big play because it was offside on St. John's. So they'll get another chance. Repeat, repeat fourth down, half the distance. Defense, offside, still fourth down. Now he calls St. John's defense or offense. He calls Iona them. Did you hear that earlier? <laughs> yeah. He got offside on them. And he's also rushed 14 times for 21 yards. So the Gales with first and goal. So again, let's keep an eye on Ferrelli. They haven't thrown to him lately, and he's a guy who you could go to down here in the end zone, towards the end zone. And they also have a wide receiver out to the near side, Chris Anello, number 81. Joe Owens in motion. Here's Morrow trying to turn it outside, chased, and he dives forward inside the five to around the three yard line. Don't see Tony Morrow going outside very often. Doesn't have the speed, run down by Mike Cunningham. Also keep in mind that last blocked extra point by, uh, uh, by Iona. Now that the score is, uh, if, if Iona scores here with a one point extra Second point, it'd be a 15 point lead. So that one extra point that was missed could loom big late in this fourth quarter. Second and goal to go. Tomorrow again, the single setback. Highland looking in the end zone. The ball tipped incomplete. 
Pete Mayeski again on the play. A lot of traffic over there, Dave Jennings. Tough throw to complete. I believe it was tipped towards the line of scrimmage. Fortunately for Iona, it was because that probably would have been intercepted. There were too many red shirts around where the ball was going before it was tipped. Third and goal situation for the Gales. Look at this. Look at 22. this. Look at this formation. We got three people in the backfield, two tight ends. Very unusual formation. They'll go now to Womack, trying to skirt outside. Big defensive play over there by Kevin Conway. Came up from the secondary, and uh, he has been a real hitter all night. And you got to believe on is this fourth down, you've got to believe that Iona's going to go for it. Now, as St. John's did before, Iona's got it on the other hash, but they've got a wide open side to the left field, left side. That uh, formation they showed the last play was the first time we've seen it. Same and formation the same again. Formation. Didn't work that time. <laughs> Highland will roll to this side. Penalty flag. Looking for the end zone. Overthrows the intended receiver. He was looking for Farrelly, but there is a flag on the play. Tough, tough pass to try to complete, as you pointed out earlier, running to his left, throwing with his right hand. Well, and I, I'll tell you, Iona's going to get a big play because it was offside on St. John's. So they'll get another chance. Repeat, repeat fourth down, half the distance. Defense, offside, still fourth down. Now he calls St. John's defense or offense, he calls Iona them. Did you hear that earlier? <laughs> yeah. He got offside on them. <laughs> well, St. John's has been penalized eight times for 77 yards. I own only twice for 24 yards. Same formation, three backs, two tight ends. Roll out, Hyla. Got everybody in tight. Handoff going to running back, and it's in for the score. Mike Arterberry getting some good blocking. They really fired off the left side of the line. The center over there, Tom Killian, and the guards giving him a good push in, and Iona is on the board once again. They now trail 45-29. Now here do you try to go for the two-pointer because you're down right now by 16. The successful kick would make it 15. A two-pointer would make it 14. I say kick the ball. They may call timeout right here to yeah. talk things over, and I think that's exactly what will happen. Very often, if you try to try to make up the extra point by going for a two-pointer the next time, you don't get it, and now you become two points down. Just a power shot. Highland taking the ball. Good blocking up front. Look at that hole. And Mike Garneberry uses all of his 220 pounds to power in there. Just drive blocking. The offensive line shoots out. A couple of lead blockers. Nice lead block in for the score. Mark Conlon, number 59, one of the blockers over there. Also Tony Morrow. Now, what do you think they're talking about? <laughs> I've never seen it. Look, St. John's is off on the side. They're talking about the defense. Iona just went off to their <laughs> sideline. You got the officials around the ball. Everybody else is not to be seen. Now, there's Iona out on the field in well, the middle. Dave, you got to uh, wonder a little bit. Iona's behind. They may need that timeout a little bit later on and perhaps in a comeback. A bit, and uh, they've not wasted one, but uh, strategically, let's see what happens. Now you've got seven players for Iona lined up on the left side. You've got one lone receiver, I believe it's Donaldson, up at the top, and you've got the kicker right there, and the holder, and the center. Now they're lining us up. They've moved in every time. We're waiting. Looks like they're going to go. Highland looking. He can run it in or hit Highland right, uh, Donnelly right there for the two. And he hits Joe Donnelly for the two-point conversion. So Donnelly, who earlier caught a touchdown pass, catches the two-point conversion. And we may have a finish like last year. Why that play works is you've got single coverage on Donnelly and give him some room to run around. There's no pass rush here on Highland. He's got more time. Up at the top of the screen, one-on-one. -on -one. Donnelly, he's going to have some time, and he should be able to get free. He's going to go outside. Now come back. Come back inside, and there he is. I believe it was Johnny Del Rey who was the defender over there that he beat. See how Donnelly came back to the ball? Very important whether you're a basketball player receiving a pass, a wide receiver receiving a pass, always come back to the ball 
that precludes the chance of the defensive player cutting in front of you. Remember Bill Lambeer in that game uh, game five of the playoffs a couple years ago? He was backing away from the pass from Isaiah Thomas, and Bird cut in front of him. And we know what happened to the uh, Pistons' chances that year. It's a very important meet the ball. Fran McCall not very happy with his defense right there, the defensive coordinator. You a, you a lip reader? I won't say what I think he was saying there, Dave. <laughs> So the Redmond, who at one point led 28-0, then uh, had the big uh, lead at 45-23. Uh, now see that lead cut. Now it's back to 14. And this game is shaping up as a game of quarters. First and third, St. John's. Second and fourth, Iona. Well, last year, of course, St. John's won it in the fourth quarter. It appeared that Iona was going to win the game on that dramatic play. Menachow with a low kick this time, taken at the 35-yard line. His knee was down as he grabbed the ball, automatically down. Wardelski with the uh, ball. Let's go down on the field. Here's Carl Reuter. All right, thanks very much, Barry. Uh, I just walked over to Coach Bob Ricca before, and he was arguing with the official on that two-point conversion, saying in college football now you can't run that tackle eligible. He said the center was in the end zone. It should have nullified that two-point conversion. The official casually turned his back and walked out to the field. Ricca still was chasing after him, but those two points are going to stand. 45-31, it's a ball game. Barry? And a lot of time left, 12 minutes, 49 seconds. We promised you offense, and we've had it. You know, that's an interesting point. Actually, that's a guard eligible because Donnelly, who was the receiver, he was right next to the guy snapping the ball, so he's a guard. But he is the end man on the line of scrimmage. Interesting play, nonetheless. As right Fortunately, now. no instant replay in college. <laughs> I don't like it in the pros. And... McDermott, wide to the left, draws double coverage this time. Testing with a single setback, similar to what Iona was using before. Now sends Rudolski in motion. Pitch coming to the to Santis. Looks like he ran into his old man a little bit and fired up over there was Jack Fogliano, number 95, as he drilled him. He's got the outstanding quickness, the transfer from Westchester community. I'll tell you, Leroy Dixon came up and forcing that play very quickly. Sackinger on that side, pushing it back. Great play by the Iona defense. And as we've talked about before, this is a game of emotion, a game of momentum. It seems to have swung back towards Iona. Second and 13, loss of three on that play. Can McDermott get it out of there? He's done it in every situation they needed, except the one time when he uh, fumbled. Doubled. He's got a mouth Patano at the 41-yard line. It'll be shy of the first down. I'll tell you, Jason Villar, number 12, he uh, set and then went down on the snap, uh, but I don't think we have a call. Uh, and Iona was screaming for the movement, but uh, no call by the officials. Well, they've done a good job shutting down Manny Tassantis. The last three times he's carried the uh, football, he has not gained any yards. Wide side of the field to the left. Let's see if they go to Tassantis. They'll work from uh, pro set now. He's lined up on the right. Third and five. Mal Fatano with the diving catch. Yes, they rule it a completion, and it is a first down at the 47-yard line. Pete Adams covering on the play. Something we talked about earlier, McDermott now is double team, so Mal Fatano has to come in. He has on two straight plays. Young man who broke his wrist in preseason last year. Right, Dennis. And uh, they Dennis. had a scare last week in the scrimmage. They thought he had re-injured the wrist. Sessi now 13 for 23 for 228 yards. Good protection. Almost picked off there. Matt Fitzgerald was the man who should have had it there. It was right in his arms. McDermott was the intended receiver, and Fitzgerald had good coverage on him. One thing you'll find about a quarterback, any successful quarterback who's got a successful combination with a receiver, he will often throw the ball to him when he probably shouldn't. Now, says he knows that McDermott can catch the ball, but Fitzgerald in good position here. See, cuts in front. Good position, should have caught the ball. Second time that Iona should have had an interception earlier, Polanco dropped one that he should have had. Cessny on second with a deep drop. Incomplete, looking for a Fatano up near midfield. It was better that he had dropped that pass, wouldn't have had any yardage anyway. John Sackinger with the pressure. 
They've done a pretty good job here in the second half, keeping Sackinger away from putting a great deal of pressure on him. Early in the game, lined up on the left, Anthony Kapek went from uh, the left side of the offensive line back to the right and right guard. Then they move Sackinger over to the right side. They move Kapek over, and he is off in the double team, but uh, Kapek has done a good job on him also. This is a big defensive play for Iona. Third and 10 with 11.06 to go here in the fourth quarter. Kantowitz in the ball game at the fullback spot. Cessny dropping it out of the backfield to Santis. Will not get the first down. Picks up about four or five tough yards before he's brought down. And he'll set up a punting situation. Pete Adams and Jack Fogliano combining on the hit. And now let's see if Iona, they're still only putting one player back to receive the punts. And uh, in the past, with the short, some of the short kicks uh, have hurt because they've been uh, they've been hit. There's the wide, the, the returner back. And this will be the fifth. on the 35. Here's the punt. Oh, and he mishandles the snap. He's going to be taken down. He throws the ball upfield. Flag thrown on the play. And Tent the ball intentional. It should be intentional grounding. It's got to be. That's a, not a smart play by Tricario because now he was down. Now we'll probably lose some more yardage. He, he made two bad plays, uh, did not catch the ball, and then he compounded it by throwing away for an intentional grounding. Let's see if they move it back from approximately the 33 down to about the 18-yard line. They're talking about it now. Maybe they'll say he was down before he threw it away. Now, of course, you look at the official. They always give one call first, a preliminary call, and then they should give the, set, the primary call. He's going to walk over. Now, you got to turn on your button. Turn it on. <laughs> there it is. This first game for the officials, too. Here we go. Illegally kicking the ball against the offense. Lost it down. First down. He kicked the ball. It appeared to us from up here he threw it, but he did, uh, did kick the ball. Well, all of a sudden, this fourth quarter has become big like the second quarter for Iona. Nine penalties for St. John's, 92 yards. Mike Arterberry, the running back behind Billy Hyland. Hyland doing what he does best, scrambling. Cobb after him, and Cobb will take him down at around the line of scrimmage, around the 18-yard line. Good like play by Cobb as he really contained him there. Similar play to what St. John's tried after they had the turnover before. Go for the big play, and a player is down now for Iona on the 10 yard line. He's just rolled onto his back. Byron Walmack, who they can ill afford to lose, the speedster out of South Windsor, Connecticut, who was their leading rusher last year. And you saw the speed he has as he went 95 yards earlier for a touchdown. Appears to be a leg injury of some sort. Well, tomorrow on Sports Channel, Jerry Kuzman will be inducted into the Mets Hall of Fame. Catch the ceremonies with Fran Healy live at 1 o'clock, exclusively on Sports Channel. What a pitching staff they had back in 20 years ago. 20 years ago, Dave, and I, I uh, was doing a pre- and post-game show uh, uh, involved with the Mets at that time on radio with Sam DeLuca, a buddy this of is when yours. This is you, when you were in junior high school. No, no, not quite, Dave. I go back a little longer than that. <laughs> And I remember those days. Of course, Jerry Kuzman was one of the nicest guys. I don't know, Dave, if you've had a chance to Never to met meet. him, no. Uh, he and Tom Seaver, of course, came up around the same time. The player is uh, being helped up, as you see. St. John's people helping the Iona people there. Remember I talked about Robinson before, how he's able to put uh, weight on the knee, on the leg. Now here, Womack can't, so it appears like it's a, it's a tough, tougher injury. Mm. Well, Byron Womack, they can, as we said, ill afford to lose him because uh, he is uh, one of their premier players in, on the offense. But anyway, getting back to Jerry Kuzman, he's the kind of guy, Dave Jennings, that you would invite over to your house, and he never changed over the years. He was he was as nice and, uh, and friendly as he was earlier when he was playing with the Mets. All right, back to the action here on second down. Island ball is tipped, but it is completed. Excellent catch by Chris Della Camera. The ball tipped at the line of scrimmage, but Della Camera, with good concentration, able to make the catch. Mieski on the hit. Unfortunately, we've got offensive holding against uh, Iona. Pretty pass thrown into coverage. A great catch, but let's bring it back, folks. 
Oh. Iona has not been plagued with many penalties. That's been one of the bright spots. Iona has had uh, only about three or four penalties. In fact, this will be the uh, third penalty of the evening. And the call coming up. Holding against the offense. Still second down. Well, hopefully the Gales, uh, for them, will be able to bounce back from that uh, big penalty. The ball back to the 29-yard line. They've got to go to about the 9 for a first down. See what Highland and company come up with here. Owens, 22 in motion. Oh! Will not get away from Rich Colangelo. Spun away from one tackle. Kenny Cobb was putting pressure on along with Frank Pawlowski. <laughs> he bounces off people like a pinball. And I'll tell you something, he's going to be sore tomorrow. He has taken a lot of shots tonight. And we've seen him get up uh, limping just a, a couple of times. But he is... Uh, <laughs> you, you call him a pinball, right, Barry? Watch as he ducks underneath here. He's going to duck underneath one player, Oop, underneath, and bang. Frank Pawlowski thought he had him wrapped up there, number 63. Third and 21. Highland throwing for the sidelines for Owens into double coverage there. Conway and Colangelo were both over there. Wisely out of bounds. Uh, didn't have much of a chance of completing that pass. Set up a fourth down play. You know they're going to go for it. They've got to 824 left in the fourth down by 14 points. One thing Highland has trouble doing, uh, partially because of the nature of him not being patient, he doesn't have a good long passing game. He's good at making things happen, but the long passing game, he doesn't, you know, it's going to take a while. Chris Anello comes in the ball game as a flanker at the bottom of your picture, number 81. That's Joe Owens in motion. Left back, left back. Decides to come back this way. Highland up the middle for Farley, overthrows him. John Krug and Pete Mayeski were both in the area. And that's the first pass they've thrown to Farley here in the second half. It was, uh, except for one play, there was a penalty they threw to him in the end zone. Uh, that pass was very, it was, Farley didn't even try for it. That's how high it was. And, uh, that's a tough one right there for Iona because now what St. John's would like to do, not necessarily run out the clock, but have a nice long drive here to put it away. That's something that the Redmen have been hoping to try to do more this year. They're a big play team, Dave, and as we've seen, they've scored quickly. But they like to be a ball control team, especially in this kind of situation. Sadowski is the fullback. DeSantis gets the call. Bounces off up one up man. That's a nice gain out of what appeared to be nothing there as he goes out of bounds. And Rick is, Rick is incensed. He wants that late hit out of bounds. Rick was right over on the official. It was a little difficult from our angle up here because the St. John's players obliterate our sideline shot. But boy, I'll tell you, Rick saw it. It was right in front of him. John Chaldon with one of the hits. There's Dennis Blanchett. He wanted me to call him coach before the game. Dennis played uh, with the Jets for a few years, a little bit with the Tampa Bay uh, club. DeSantis has gained 42 yards on 13 carries, far different than last year when he gained over 140 yards. Gets the call again. Opser with the initial hit. You know, early in the game, with the success of the passing game to McDermott, you didn't see Tosanis because you didn't need him. But now is when they need him. They just like to run the clock, keep it going, stay in bounds. Yeah, what St. John's wants to do right here is not fumble the football. Nothing fancy here. You see Opes are filling the gap nicely there. 6'2", 225, senior out of West Hampton Beach High School on Long Island. McDermott will line up wide to the left. Now it's Palanca. third and one, and McDermott has 10 yards to play with right here. Chesney working from the eye. DeSantis diving right, for the job. first down. It appears that he may have it. Had to get to around the 39. I mean, on that situation, Blanco is playing 10 yards off, third and one. He's got to come up because he's, he's wide open for just a quick out. You wouldn't think that St. John's would pass the ball, but it is there. Well, they did pick up the first down as he got uh, to about the 40-yard line. So St. John's trying to move on the ground, eat up some time with 7.09 to go here. 
and they lead in the ball game. By 14, DeSantis oh, yes. slips one turn tackle, up, up. couple of fakes, and gets inside the 40, but for St. John's, more importantly, he stays in bounds. I'll tell you something, Anthony Cape picked the left tackle that time. He shot off the line. I thought he he jumped the snap count. He showed some, some quickness that time. The ball was run away from him. I thought there would be a flag, but again, the key thing is now this running game, the clock keeps running, 6.30 left in the fourth, and right now, second down and seven. St. John's is getting some yardage on the ground. They'll just stay with it. Kapek is six feet, 265. Your size. <laughs> that was before I went on a diet. Second down. And the fullback gets the call, Scott Kantrowitz as he crosses the 45 to around the 46. Freshman out of Yonkers, John Chaldon stopping the play, but the clock continues to tick. Under six minutes to go, and St. John's with a 14-point lead as they try to beat Iona for the ninth consecutive time, and Harold Crocker not too pleased with things. Out of the eye. Quick out to the sideline, incomplete. Jack Fogliano was putting pressure on as St. John's uh, tried to go to Johnny Del Rey to the outside, number 42. And that'll set up a uh, punting situation. Remember what happened on the last punt? And oftentimes when that happens, you're thinking about it as a punter. Now, Tricario is a senior, so he should have the confidence to say, I want to get out there and kick it again. Once again, Ion only has one player deep, and they're bringing 10. They do come, but it's a good kick by Tricario. It drives uh, Bergamini back inside the five-yard line after he fumbled. And he's uh, pushed out of bounds on the far side. Say one thing that's really hurt Iona today is the special teams, especially the punting game. And you know, this was the first year they put in a special coach to coach the special teams, and they thought it was going to be a big help. We've got a break in the action right now, and St. John's leading by 14. I'm Jerry McDougall. At Apple Bank, we believe that our loyal customers deserve something extra. That's why we've introduced the Apple Bank Family Program. Members of the Apple Bank family receive special benefits like reduced rates on loans, free checking with interest, a low-rate Visa card, a personal family banker, and 24-hour banking. The exciting new Apple Bank family program. Join now and feel good about banking again. Apple Bank for Savings. We're good for you. Barry Landers along uh, with my sidekick Dave Jennings here at St. John's University. Let's go down on the field and another colleague, Carl Reuter. Thanks very much, Barry. Uh, not good news from the Iona sidelines for number 33, Byron Womack, the junior running back. It looks like he's got a possible crack on the left side of his ankle. Doctors are wrapping it right now. They're going to probably take him off to the hospital. Obviously, he's through for tonight. It's just a matter of uh, what the x-rays are going to show. But the doctor is not optimistic at this point, really thinks that there is a crack along the left side. So Byron Womack, number 33, the junior, is finished for tonight. Barry? A real tough loss because he's a fine football player. He is, and, and as I pointed out, you can always tell when you watch a player t being taken off when, he's, when it's a leg injury. If he can put weight on it, it's a good sign. If he can't put weight on it, it's not. Uh, you don't like to speculate, but that's something you can keep an eye on. And there you see them working on him in the background there. Valley coming in motion. Island will put it up ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage, but Farley makes a fine catch. And picks up about eight yards, and it looked like that one would go for nothing. Kenny Cobb on the stop. You know, how many times have we seen the pass tipped at the line of scrimmage? And same criticism of Doug Flutie, and, and it's a valid criticism. A short quarterback has problems with your, off, with your defensive line. Now the young man is 13 for 27 for 189 yards, and he's been picked off twice, so not a bad debut. For Billy Hyland. Good play by Farrelly, too. Here's uh, Joe Owens going in motion. Hand off on the draw. Misses Morrow. 
And Morrow with a fine run, picks up a lot of yardage as he gets out to the 35-yard line. So Tony Morrow running well tonight. With 4th, 29 left in the fourth quarter. Again, in college, whenever you have a first down and the clock is running, you stop the clock momentarily while you do set the chain. So that's a plus. Now the clock is running again. Complete over the middle. Nice pickup inside the 40. And look at uh, Chris Anello battle for extra yardage. Finally, Kevin Conway pulled him down. Nice reception by Chris Anello, the junior wide receiver. And it gives Iota a first down inside the 40 yard line at the 39. So Highland with another completion. He's got Bergamini as a flanker to the top of your picture. And he's got Donnelly to the bottom. Joe Owens going in motion. And gets the completion. No, they rule it incomplete. Oh, my. That was a beautiful play by Highland as uh, St. John's brought five players. Brought five players, and Highland did a nice job eluding it, but uh, the receiver, Joe Owens, uh, should have caught the ball right in his gut, but didn't catch it with his hands. Tried to trap it against his chest, his stomach, which is what a lot of receivers do. Uh, if you ever watch a guy like Steve Largent, always catches it with his hands. Instead of trying to trap it in your chest, you're very likely to drop the ball that way. Perhaps a freshman mistake over there. Highland now 14 for 29 for 214 yards. Donnelly going in motion. Highland can't find any room. You couldn't see anything over there, <laughs> literally. <laughs> the land of the field. Giants. <laughs> Guys, will you get down for me so I can uh, at least throw the ball? Frank Pawlowski. You never had that trouble, Dave Jennings. Yeah, but I didn't throw the ball. I kicked the ball. But I uh, I mean, some of these players, whether it be Division III, they, I, when I was in college, St. Lawrence, Division III, our offensive line was probably 205 pounds, about six feet tall. Now you look at these guys, they're huge. It doesn't matter what division. Well, the biggest difference, I guess, is speed between Division III and moving up. And Fordham has learned that early, playing 1AA this year. Moving up from Division Three. Oh, great pressure, and the sack will be made right there. The Redmond coming real hard. Vince O'Grady. Vince O'Grady, number 39, coming from the right side of, uh, of Highland. Uh, in, in the first half, uh, they're getting a lot of pressure from his backside, but that time they came from the right side, and, of course, that's the top side of your screen. You're going to see Highland now. In a sense, here it is his backside, but he senses it and ducks but doesn't get away. O'Grady, one of those good-looking sophomore linebackers out of Xavier High School in Brooklyn. Both teams very happy with their linebacking cores. Most times you like to rush from the blind side, but because uh, Highland was facing this sideline towards the bottom of the screen, the blind side was his right side. So fourth and long here. Highland will put it up looking deep, and it will be picked off on the far side. Picked off by Travis Oselmo. And he brings it back to the 46-yard line. Third interception thrown by Billy Highland. Joe Donnelly over there. Joe Donnelly didn't seem to be on the same page as uh, Billy Highland because he was open, but he just kept going and did not seem to know where the pass was. Uh, uh, a, a tough play by, by Highland because he let him out there well enough. It'll be over on the left side of the screen, but the defensive back just comes right in. and There it is. Oselmo, a little guy, 5'7", 150 pounder, and he was a teammate at Holy Cross High School of Billy Highland, so... Uh, they used to play and catch, I guess. <laughs> Probably was one of his receivers back then. Little guy, but uh, great ability. Cunningham at rip. Scott Sesney handing off. Don't forget to stay tuned for our Apple Bank MVP. It's got to be McDermott. Has to be McDermott. And we'll be having the presentation a little bit later on. Leroy Dixon on the stop. As the clock continues to tick here, a minute and 50 seconds remaining. Manny Tessantis with the very short gain, about uh, half a yard maybe. Redmond still going with basically their first unit. They want to wrap this one up. They lead by 14, 45-31. Anthony, carry out. Kantrowitz is the fullback with DeSantis, the tailback. Hand off to uh, Kantrowitz. And this uh, freshman from Mount St. Michael High School in the Bronx stopped after he picked up a few. Leroy Dixon again with a uh, tackle. Timeout taken by the Gales here. 
They've got to use them. They used one before, and now they've got one left, I believe. But one thing that hurts a little bit St. John's here, if the officials are doing a good job, there's no 25-second clock. So St. John's cannot run down the clock to the 0-0 zero zero on the 25-second. They've just got to guess. Uh, but meanwhile, they're just going to run the, just going to keep running the ball. And I would think if they get to a fourth down situation, just run it again. Don't even try to punt the ball if you do. Well, you saw what happened two punts before when Tucario had trouble holding onto the ball. So they'll have the timeout here and uh, the clock showing 120. Hope that you'll be tuned in next week when we continue our coverage right here from St. John's Redmond Field as the St. John's Club goes up against Siena. In two weeks, it'll be Hofstra against CW Post in the battle for bragging rights on Long Island. I'll tell you, Tom Marshall's club, CW Post, uh, could give Hofstra a real run for their money. Dennis McDermott is our Apple Bank MVP, and he has caught seven passes for 170 yards and has scored three touchdowns as a receiver and one other touchdown on the punt return. DeSantis with a short game to midfield. Let's see if Iona takes another timeout. They will. That's their last one. You know, you, two, you talked about it before having to take that timeout. I believe it was on the extra point attempt, and you said it may come back to haunt them, although 14 points a minute, 10 down. Well, right now the Gales have to be questioning themselves, Dave Jennings, about those big plays. I think there have been five plays that have resulted in touchdowns that, that have been over 30 yards or more. And slow to, slow to make a change on covering McDermott. They had him single covered, and he just took advantage of that. Right now, Iona expecting the punt as they've sent in a punt return, but says he's back on the field for the fourth down play. I thought they would go for it. I Not necessarily go for it, but they don't want a punt here. Let Iona take the ball over midfield. If there's a blocked punt, it could be returned for a touchdown. You got the onside kick, so just, just, just try to run it up the middle and then let Iona take the ball over. Redmond have sent Bill Osterman, freshman fullback, a little guy at 5'7", 170 into the ball game. And now, now let's see St. John's will take timeout. Well, once again, Dennis McDermott with the numbers that are very impressive. He's caught seven passes tonight for 170 yards and three touchdowns and also scored a fourth touchdown earlier. And he is our Apple Bank MVP. I don't think there's much choice in uh, arguing about that. Scott Cessney's had a good ball game as well. Game is going on over three hours, Dave Jennings. Reminds me of uh, some of the games that you were involved in. Well, and there's no instant replay here. That's what uh, <laughs> has thrown some of them back. But when you have that much passing, a lot of big plays, and uh, change of possession, a lot of kickoffs, uh, plays like that, you will get a long, uh, a long game. And, uh, of course, if I think uh, as, as Coach Crocker looks this game over, he's going to wish they could eliminate half that game, the first and the uh, third quarters. Scott Sessony needed four touchdown passes tonight to uh, uh, tie Todd Jamison's record for most touchdown passes in St. John's history. He's at three tonight, completed 13 for 26 for 228 yards. And St. John's just on the doorstep of wrapping this one up. Big crowd has enjoyed the action. St. John's will go up on the series, 11 games to two. Well, interesting now, Tricario is going to come out in the field and punt the ball. I'm, I'm a little surprised here. I would, I would just as soon see them run the football. Of course, they could run a fake, but if you're going to run a fake, why not just run an offensive play? Now, Tricario back there with 10 guys up, just get rid of it. Just get rid of it. And he does. Average 45 yards on five kicks. <laughs> and look at that one. He'll get another break on the roll as it dies inside the three-yard line, goes out of bounds. And uh, I'll tell you, his uh, favorite no uh, play has been the roll today. No <laughs> Dave, what was the best artificial surface for you to kick? Where's the place you had the best roll? Well, I, I don't know as though there's best artificial turf. I'll tell you, there's bad artificial turf where you have fields that are baseball stadiums because where you have the mound, home plate, and second base, they've got a zip-in astroturf, and it leaves big seams, huge wide seams or high seams, and it can create a lot of problems. I want to thank our spotters tonight, Mike Booty of St. John's, Dave Taromeo of Iona, Dave, the sports information director. Both guys do a tremendous job under some tough conditions. Conditions. And also thanks to Frank Racanello, St. John's SID, for his help. Island not quitting, scrambling, still on his feet, and finally driven down. I think it was Palowski who finally got him. 
now he doesn't have any more room. They're going to spot it on, say, the one-yard line. And while we're passing out some kudos to people, Jim O'Donnell, facilities man here at St. John's, uh, also really uh, made this telecast uh, a much better one with his uh, cooperation. Well, here comes maybe the safety that we've been waiting for. <laughs> Island back almost uh, was uh, gotten in the end zone. Bergamini with the catch goes out of bounds on the far side with 28 seconds. Defending on the play was Dan Viola, number 28. Remember when Krug at the end of the first half was playing back about 45 yards? Well, now he's back. Well, he keeps walking now. He's back on the 30. He's going to keep going. He's about on the 30-yard line. He's playing a little soft, if you ask me. He ought to play a little deeper. Now he's back on the 35. Carly coming in motion. Island looking for the big guy, but it's incomplete triple coverage over there. Clock stops with 23 seconds left. St. John's, by the way, has never been, uh, hasn't been shut out in 111 games. Harold Crocker saw that uh, streak continue here very quickly. Before he turned around, it was St. John's 28 nothing. But his club has showed character in coming back, and well, uh, as we said, the big plays have really hurt him. Well, Harold Crocker's uh, sending his punt team now. I wonder if he's got any trick plays here. <laughs> if he does, he shouldn't use them. Save them for when you can really use them. Manical, who's done a pretty good job, the freshman punter. Nobody's back for uh, St. John's. He can get a 100-yard punt here. Well, he won't kick it quite that far. It doesn't get the roll. It's a reverse roll, and it will die at the 33-yard line. I wonder if St. John's is in control of this field. Maybe they <laughs> tilt it whenever the other team is Where's kicking. Where's the crown, I know, right? really. It's in England. 13 seconds left. It's a pitch out here, right? It's a soccer pitch. Hope you've enjoyed the action. From here at St. John's, the second of our 11-game series of college football here on Sports Channel. And hope you'll support the local college football teams in the area when they're playing. And a lot of games coming up tomorrow. CW Post will be at home. And Stony Brook will also be at home, as will Wagner College. And Fordham will be playing at home as well on Saturday. So why not take in a local football game? <laughs> And that will just about do it. Scott Sesney going down. I don't think Iona will call a timeout, even if they had one here. And the teams will shake hands right here, as this one is history. So the Redmond Dave Jennings continue their mastery over Iona, and they win this one 45 to 31. Although the mastery a little different than in past years. The past years has been one or two points, and this this year was. Uh, <laughs> Really, it wasn't. Even, it, it was closer at points, and then it wasn't close. A, an interesting game by quarters. If you were to break this down, I I could see a team getting the game film and picking it up in the second quarter. Saying, oh, I don't looks pretty good. Then go to the third quarter and say, Wait a second, St. John's looks pretty good. And say, Wait a second, you can't get a lot out of this film. But one thing you can get out of this film is McDermott is a heck of a receiver. Well, the only thing perhaps keeping him from being a uh, Division One receiver is his size, just about six feet, and uh, they liked you to go about six two, six three in Division One. Well, that's it. And a lot of these players, uh, I, I played Division Three football, or I punted anyway. <laughs> I never, I never said I played the game, but I, uh, I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed it. You had a lot of fun in Division Three. Good first game for both clubs. Uh, we did, had some mistakes on both uh, clubs' part, but uh, St. John's emerges with the victory. Down on the field uh, with a happy coach. He's smiling. Here's Carl Reuter with a smiling Bob Ricca. All right, thanks very much, Barry. I know you're smiling, but inside I know you're not pleased with this win. Uh, Carl, this was a season of Ajita right here in one game. This is uh, unbelievable. 28 nothing. we let him back in the game. A credit to Iona, obviously. I mean, those kids uh, came back and... Uh, no, no, no easy breaths tonight. All right, positives in the game had to be Sesney and McDermott. What Sesney about the negative? and McDermott were on, uh, in mid-season form. They were great. I thought DeSantes played really well. Mental, mental mistakes. We had four penalties in the first half that uh, field position allowed uh, Iona back in the ball game with the silly mistakes on our part. And then the fumble punt and, you know, a couple of things. But uh, all in all, the effort, the physical effort was terrific. We just have to work on, again, typical first game. I told you prior to the ball mm -hmm. game, you never know what's going to happen first day, first time out, and you saw a lot in both teams. All right, look, coming into the game, they have a real good one in John Sackinger. had 29 sacks the last two seasons. How did you try to neutralize him? Were you pleased with the play of your offensive line against him? We were uh, for every segment except for the uh, second quarter. In the second quarter, Sackinger himself stopped our offense. 
It wasn't uh, Iona per se, it was John Sackinger, a great football player. He's just a one-man show, so he gave us fits. All right, 28 nothing, and all of a sudden they start coming back, and you start pulling your hair out, and you get gray very quickly. Well, you know what it is, uh, momentum, and uh, once uh, you have it and let it go, thank goodness we came back and kicked that field goal before the uh, end of the half. I think that was uh, the big... I wouldn't say turning point, but that's what uh, I think gave us some impetus going into the halftime. Billy Hyland, a nice game as a freshman. He really uh, had some uh, had your guys going in fits out there. No, you notice one thing though. He'd like to scramble and come to Towards the motion left. on the left side. Left. I tell you that I've scouted the kid in high school. He went to my high school, Holy Cross. He wanted him to come here badly, but uh, the situation. Uh, Scott being a senior, he felt he could play right away uh, going up there, and uh, I don't want to see him the next three years. <laughs> All right, let me ask you something now. It, it is the first game of the season. You haven't looked at the films yet. What adjustments are you going to have to make for the season and even next week against Siena? Well, obviously, uh, the mistakes. We're really pleased. We said we have big play people. We're going to move the football with big plays, and I think we did that today. Uh, that first drive uh, when we touched the ball, the opening uh, after the uh, first possession, I thought was terrific. We uh, combined run and pass. We did what we'd like to do. So, uh, obviously, right now, without seeing the films, we have to go back and look at the mental aspect of the game. All right, congratulations on win number one. It's always tough. You said you had butterflies at the beginning of the uh, game, and uh, congratulations on a nice win. Okay, Carl, thank you. All right, Bob Ricker, head coach at St. John's. They're victorious against Iona. Now stay tuned because Barry and Dave will be back to wrap it all up for you right after this timeout. Sports Channel's Metro College Football Game of the Week has been brought to you by Apple Bank. Apple Bank for savings. We're good for you. I wonder if I can get a car loan. Oh, I wonder if they'll give me a vacation loan. Join the Apple Bank family and you'll never have to wonder if you can meet your financial needs. You'll get a personal family banker, free, no bounce checking, and more. Join the Apple Bank family and feel good about banking again. Come in or call Apple Bank for Savings. We're good for you. I'm a busy guy and my time is valuable. Keeping in touch is important to me, so I need a cellular phone. Naturally, I go to The Wiz, where Cellcom and The Wiz take care of everything. There are no hidden costs. Buy your cellular phone from The Wiz and get a free antenna, installation, and choice of 9X or Metro One service at no extra charge. When you need a cellular phone, The Wiz and Cellcom are the singular source for everything cellular. Nobody beats The Wiz. On your mark, get set. I can't believe it. I'm winning. I'm really winning. Even if you think you're ahead of the game, talk about your financial plans with the MetLife representative. Or you just might run off in the wrong direction. Get Met. It pays. This fall, Sports Channel's got a lineup of local gridiron greats that's hard to beat. St. John's, Fordham, CW Post, Wagner, Stony Brook, and more. Every week, join former Jet and Giant Dave Jennings, along with Barry Landers, for Sports Channel's Metro College Football Game of the Week. Next Friday at 7.30, the high-scoring St. John's Redmen host Siena. Live local college football on Sports Channel. A lot to get excited about. Back at St. John's University, Barry Landers along with Dave Jennings. A kind of bizarre opening ball game for both clubs. 45-31, uh, a lot of points, some mistakes, and uh, some pretty exciting football. was exciting football. When we opened the show, we said we'd see a lot of points, a lot of passing, and that's exactly what we got. I think one of the turning points in the game, as Coach Ricka said, after the game was that field goal at the end of the first half. It was a turning point. It got the momentum back, and it kind of deflated Iona somewhat. And when St. John's came out in the third quarter, they were fired up, and they kept their momentum going from that field goal. Looking at the Iona picture, they certainly had to be pleased with Billy Highland's uh, debut. Had a rough start and uh, came back and wound up with pretty good numbers. 15 for 32, 223 yards, two touchdowns, and three interceptions. No question. I think he's got a fine career ahead of him. He's, he's inexperienced right now, but it was only his first game, but he looked good. He's, he's got some things to learn about, a little more patience and reading a little better, but uh, I think that uh, uh, Coach Crocker at Iona has to be pleased with his quarterback. And for St. John's, they got the great passing attack going, and they've got to be 
little bit worried about the defense, though, and uh, shore up a couple of areas. Well, again, you don't like to be in a position of having to score more points than you give up. Last year, uh, the uh, the St. John's defense gave up more points. You don't like to get in shooting contests because sometimes your your gun isn't loaded and uh, you got to count on your defense. I know Coach Ricker wanted to uh, uh, improve the defense. So a big day for Scott Sesney and Dennis McDermott. And once again, the final score here at Redmond Field on the campus of St. John's University, St. John's 45 and Iona 31. Remember, next Friday, Sports Channel's Metro College Football Game of the Week pits Siena against the St. John's Redmond. That's Metro College Football next Friday at 7.30 on Sports Channel. Tomorrow at 1.30, it's game two of a big three-game series for the Mets. They take on the Pittsburgh Pirates. That's the Mets versus the Pirates tomorrow at 1.30, live and exclusive on Sports Channel. Stay tuned for all the latest scores and highlights on Sports Nightly. This is Barry Landers for Dave Jennings and Carl Reuter saying so long until next Friday. And thanks for watching Metro College Football on Sports Channel Plus. Hi, everybody. This is Sports Nightly in New York. I'm Daryl Burnett. And I'm Mike Breen. Top headlines tonight from the U.S. Open, Graf and Martina Advent.